Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger to Schooling. In this session of the video, we're going to talk about the cubital fossa. So the cubital fossa is actually a triangular depression area in front of the elbow. So this is my elbow. You can see this triangular, which is actually a depression. We cannot see the depression right here because of my, uh, because of my the. It's actually the depression is a little bit smaller, but I have made it a big one because it should be clear uh, in 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 making uh, this video. So just uh, for remembrance, so remember that, that the uh, cubital fossa is actually a triangular depression which is on the front of the elbow which have got its contents, its boundaries and we are going to take a deep look into each of these things. So the cubital fossa, so remember this is the medial side of uh, the, of your arm and this is the lateral side. But if you, you take your hand, so remember this one, the little finger side from the uh, little finger side, it's the medial side. Oh, here if you go from uh, middle finger to this word, it's the medial side. And if you take your thumb and you go that that point, it will be your lateral side. So remember. So if I if I put my hand like this, remember this one. The red line indicates that it's the medial side over there because it's towards the little finger, and this one is the lateral side, which is towards my thumb. So now coming towards the cubital fossa. <clears throat> so cubital fossa actually has three surfaces. So one surface, the above surface or the base, which is actually formed by an imaginary line. There's an imaginary line uh, which is between the two epicondyles of humerus. So uh, we cannot see humerus here. We don't have the humerus bone. But remember, the two epicondyles of humerus, if we take an imaginary line straight between them, we will have the base of the cubital fossa, which actually lies in our arm. So in an anatomical sense, this is from here uh, till our shoulder, we have got our arm and from here from the elbow point till here we have got our uh, uh, forearm so if, if somebody asks you where does cubital fossa lies so you you must be remembering this uh, only the base base of the cubital fossa lies in the arm but the uh, but the rest of the cubital fossa actually lies in the forearm only the base which is between which there there is an imaging line between two epicondyles of the humerus which lies in the uh, arm so other uh, other lies in the forearm so now let's talk uh, further about the cubital fossa. So cubital fossa uh, in, in which uh, we have got two other boundaries uh, as we go downward. On the medial side, we have got a muscle which is forming its medial boundary which is called the pronator teres muscle in sh for a short PT. So por pronator teres muscle for the medial boundary of the cubital fossa, the base is formed by the imaginary line of the to epicondyles of humerus. But on the lateral side, we have got another muscle, which is the brachioradialis muscle. If I show my hand like this one, so you can see that this, uh, these Im this image in line formed between two epicondyles of humerus, which is the base, and this is the medial side. I write M over there, and it is formed by the pronator teres. And on the lateral side, we have got uh, brachioradialis, for short, BR. So we are done with the uh, boundaries of the cubital fossa. Now let's get towards the contents of cubital fossa so the contents of cubital fossa are actually there are four contents of cubital fossa it would be easy to remember if we go through this formula which is called mbbr uh, but uh, for some people you you must have heard if you're a medical student you know what is mbbs which is a medical degree right but if you uh, remove the S and put the R, so you will be calling it MBBR. So it is easy to remember. So if anybody, anybody asks you, the, if you think about the cubital fossa and their contact, remember from medial side towards the lateral side, just remember the formula MBBR. That's it, from medial to the lateral. So the most medial, so the most medial, which is the M, which stands for the median nerve. We have got one, this is median nerve. So M stands for? You can call it the median nerve. For the B, we which we would call it brachial artery. And other B it stands for bicipital epineurosis of the bicep you can say that and r stands for finally which we is the radial nerve 
All right, we have done with the contents of the cubital fossa. Very easy to remember about the formula from medial to lateral side, which is through the MBBR. M means medial nerve, median nerve, B for brachial artery, B for, and the B for basal epineurus, and R for radial nerve. So we have got two nerves, one artery, and one uh, the tendons of, you can say, extension of the bicep, which is bicepital epineurosis. So this one is the red one shows the M, this one shows the B, and this uh, uh, blue color shows the other B, and this orange color shows the R. So this is simple, very MBBR. If you can see my hand, I'm sorry for the color, it has faded, but you can see from the medial, we have got the median nerve, and from the blue, we have got the brachial artery, which actually further divides into uh, two other branches, which we'll talk just in a bit. But another, uh, now talk about other B, which is this one, which is called the bicepital epineurosis, and last one is called the radial nerve. If you can see it clearly, you will understand how it looks like in the arm, in the, uh, between the arm and forearm. <clears throat> All right, we have just talked about the lateral and medial boundaries and the, the contents of the cubital fossa. Now let's talk about uh, the roof and floor of the cubital fossa. So if we talk about the floor, you must be clear that floor of the cubital fossa is formed by two muscles. We have got the brachialis muscle. Another one is the supinator muscle. All right, only two muscles are involved in forming the floor of the cubital fossa. So always remember, this is from medial to lateral. So this one is the medial, uh, me medial uh, muscle, and this one is the lateral muscle, which is forming the floor of the cubital fossa. But if you go to the roof, which is a little bit, uh, uh, not lengthy, but not complicated, but a little bit lengthy in, in concept. So the roof of the, uh, of the uh, cubital fossa is actually formed by the skin, which is overlying, uh, overlying structure, skin. Then we go, as we go downwards, it is the superficial fascia. Then we go downward, we get deep fascia. And in the end, we get bicipital epineurosis. So if you go talk about the roof, you must say roof from up, upside down. You say we have got a skin, then superficial fascia, then deep fascia. And as we go in the end, in the last floor, we'll find the bicipital epineurosis, which is also this structure in the, uh, in the cubital fossa. So one thing to remember, there are other structures which are also present uh, in the superficial fascia. We have just talked about it, superficial fascia, and the roof of the uh, cubital fossa has four, four things to remember, which has got skin, we have got uh, superficial fascia, we have got deep fascia, and we have got bicipital epineurosis. So the superficial fascia also has structures in it. So the superficial fascia, remember this contains four structures. All right. Some book says it uh, it contains uh, three structures, but if you add the lymph nodes, it would be four. So we'll now talk about the uh, the contents of the uh, actually the superficial fascia of which is forming the roof of the uh, with other other con with other structures from the roof of the cubital fossa. So. Uh, very easy to remember the uh, roof of the cuba uh, roof of the uh, cubital fossa contains the superficial fascia and with superficial fascia we've got four structures number one we have got uh, the which is not included in some textbooks but it's the supra trochlear lymph node another structure number second is medial cutaneous nerve of forearm forearm means this side all right and the structure which is the number number two number three is the lateral that's it cutaneous nerve of forearm and last structure but not the least this is the most important structure i must highlight it the number fourth structure is the medial cubital vein Ah, oh, that's it. That's it. We have got important structure here. Uh, one thing to more, uh, one thing to remember, and uh, which is clinically important. Uh, they can ask you in OSPI. The brachial artery, this one, the brachial artery, which is the, the uh, number second from the middle to lateral side. Brachial artery is actually used for measuring your blood pressure, right? So brachial artery is also used for measuring your blood pressure through your cubital fossa. But this medial cubital vein is used in IV. 
you must have gone to the doctor and they have took you, the, uh, the attendant took your blood from here. So you, have, you never thought which artery is actually used. So you now remember this. This is it. The medial cubital vein is actually used for the IV. So this is very important to understand, all right? Now you know that uh, this medial cubital vein is used for the IV, but if, you're, if somebody is doing IV, we is, there's a possibility we can damage any of these structures. So that's why God placed the, uh, this one, bicipital epineurosis, in between them. So whenever you are going to do an IV, this bicipital epineurosis actually protects the other structures from damaging the other structure from by them if you are doing an IV. So you just... Uh, do an IV through medial cubital, medial cubital vein. All right, so this is all the basic concept of the cubital fossa. I hope uh, I got the topic very much cleared and easily understandable. I make sure you get good grades in the exam. So see you next time and with another video. Keep visiting Tiger's Cooling.